Hey everyone. Well, you're looking at where my journey with Australia's public health care system has come to an end. This is the third GP that's kicked me out of their surgeries in the last two years. And this is because uh, on Friday, when I was here last, I went to an appointment at 10 to 1 uh, with my GP, who I thought was very nice, very, very decent person. And I was told I could no longer be a patient there because I'm a bulk billing patient. Okay, I'm dependent on the government paying my medical bills. And that's been the case since I was a kid when um, I was infected with tainted blood. Okay, so I've been informed that I can no longer be a patient here. This is despite the fact that uh, a couple of weeks ago I shared a video about how this medical centre uh, made an emergency referral uh, to Royal Prince Alfred Hospital because I've got bone marrow failure, I have severe aplastic anemia, and I ha have tainted blood. I've still got the tainted blood I've, I've had since a kid. And um, I have pronounced neurological problems because of my tainted blood. My right lung now, uh, you know, it fails. It doesn't work properly. And, uh, you know, numerous other things in my body are, are shutting down. So I was sent to RPA uh, to get some tests done. They did some blood tests uh, for the condition that my tainted blood has caused. It's called cryoglobulinemia. I can never pronounce it. Basically, it, it freezes my blood. My blood, go, if it gets cold, it clumps together and it causes blood clots and blood flow problems. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so um, I also have, uh, you know, I've been told I've come out of remission for my severe aplastic anemia and it's cause, causing um, uh, bone marrow signaling problems. So I've got motor function problems. So uh, as is standard for someone with my condition, severe aplastic anemia, we uh, get bone marrow biopsies done. And to my great shock, Royal Prince Alfred Hospital uh, told me that uh, they wouldn't be able to do a bone marrow biopsy uh, on me because of my tainted blood. Yeah, um, the, the tainted blood that they gave me. Royal Prince Alfred Hospital gave me tainted blood as a kid. They did it knowingly. And the, the blood was actually past its expiry date. I mean, people should have been jailed for that. It had no therapeutic value. And it left me with lifelong problems. And uh, basically, yeah, it, it, it was my, how I bumped into Australia's deadliest medical scandal. Okay, this has infected thousands of Australians and uh, we've got people in our group who are infected from babies. Okay, or like me, infected as children. Our whole lives we've known this and my whole life I've been dependent on the healthcare system. And so what's happened is uh, in the last 18 months, uh, a lot of GPs here in Sydney, I've shared videos about that. I, I can't get a GP to treat me because I'm you know, not, not the uh, most affluent fellow. Um, I do have a, a gold ring though, um, which I've, I've had for about 30 years. <laughs> a mate of mine suggested I buy it as a joke. <laughs> So I've worn that joke, but yeah, I'm not the most affluent person. I don't mind that. I don't mind it because I was, um, this has been my whole life. I was infected as a kid. And so obviously I'm, I need the healthcare system, but the healthcare system doesn't need me. It's, it's denied me treatment now. I mean, Royal Prince Alfred won't give me a standard test because um, I have to wear a mask. Okay. And because of my taint of blood, it's given me a condition that means my right lung doesn't work properly. So I can't wear a mask for any, any time. I suffocate, like it's terrible. I, I just cannot wear one on my face. I find it very difficult to breathe as is. And so uh, they won't give me a, a, um, a bone marrow biopsy, even though I've got a mask exemption, because they say you must wear a mask when you do the bone marrow biopsy. These people are lunatics. To the international community, if there's anyone watching from overseas, please, for God's sake, help us, please, seriously. Australia's fallen. This place is mad. I mean, over the last two years, I've had, the, I've had some major symptoms. My legs have literally gone from underneath me. I've had to drag my torso. I had a GP, okay, who thought I'd had a stroke. He wanted me to go to your RPA to get an MRI scan and they wouldn't do it because I haven't had their precious jab, okay? A precious jab for a COVID, which is hundreds of times less deadly than the bloody virus they gave me. So, um, basically what's going to happen now is uh, I've decided that um, I can't do it anymore. You know, I can't be bounced out of any more GP surgeries. No one wants a bulk bill anymore in Sydney. You know, people will probably uh, very kindly message and say, oh, I know a bulk billing doctor in, in Timbuktu or in, in bloody, uh, you know, Victoria or somewhere. Listen, I'm disabled. Okay, I don't drive anymore. So I can't, I can't go to all these far flung places. I'm in the middle of Sydney here. I'm just looking, you know, I just want a local GP. Is that too much to ask? Clearly it is. And so as a result, you know, I've decided um, 
that's it. I don't want to do it anymore and I'm not going to do it anymore. My dignity is worth far more to me than GPs and their ever-changing uh, payment structures, for goodness sake. I mean, honestly, that GP at that medical centre back there, they knew I was an emergency. I am so outraged. I really am. And then they dumped me as a patient before finishing the referral. I had to go back to them because there was a problem with my referral. The problem was RPA wouldn't do it. Royal Prince Alfred Hospital wouldn't complete the referral. They wouldn't give me the standard bone marrow test. So I went back to my GP to get a new referral to go to a different hospital and they've told me I'm no longer a patient because they're no longer bulk billing. What am I to do? What am I to do? Truly, what am I to do? I'm not doing this anymore. I'm really not. I'm um, more frustrated and more angry than I am scared. I've got a British lawyer in the UK who's represented me as a witness for Australia in this infected blood inquiry. This is uh, Britain's inquiry into their infected blood scandal. It also has, of course, implications for us here in Australia, okay, because Britain were the architects of Australia's blood system and they're involved in what happened to tens of thousands of patients down here and especially involved in the infection of 1,750 Australians with the bleeding disorder haemophilia. These are victims of, of what, what is uh, knowing infections. These haemophiliacs were knowingly infected, OK? And uh, they, they have, like me, have had been great frustrations in accessing health care and accessing the support we need. This is a major cover-up. And now I can't even get a bloody doctor. So um, I'm, I've got good news. Oh, this is that step of crossing. Can I just drive? <laughs> Sydney driving. I've got some good news. Um, I've been absolutely terrified of death my whole life. When I was younger, I was, I, I, you know, it was terrible. I thought about it every moment, okay? And now I'm actually too angry to even be scared anymore and uh, I'll take what comes. So uh, I'm not going to do the public health care system anymore. And in my last video, I spoke of the fact that I'm going to have to try and find some work, okay? And I'll be informing Centrelink who uh, supply my paltry disability support pension, even though they know that uh, I'm a victim of crime, okay? Uh, when I was knowingly infected by some reprehensible doctors that gave me a bloody expired blood product, for God's sake. And now I'm left in the poorhouse like haemophiliacs and other infected blood victims for our whole lives. But now, now I'm in the poorhouse. You know, I was infected as a public patient, but now they've changed the goalposts and they say, well, you know what? You can't afford it, so you won't get treated. Well, I'll say this to those people who did this to me, to the doctors that have kicked me out of their surgeries because I am a bulk billing patient, I'll say this to you. You'll be hearing from a judge. We're gonna, I'm going to take this before a judge. You do not do this to an Australian. Now, you've, you have agreed to an oath. You committed to an oath. You do not treat Australians like this, especially when they are tainted blood victims, okay? We're going to get this health system before a court. I'm determined of that. I'm going to be sending this video to my lawyer in the UK. I'm asking British infected blood victims, come on, speak up for us, for goodness sake. Speak up for us down here. You know what's happened. And please, if you're followers and supporters of Infected Blood Australia, please know, okay, I'm going to go out fighting. Very soon, I'll start recording this podcast that I've uh, said I'll record. I've got some fantastic guests lined up, great Australian guests. It's an Australian podcast, and it's about the adventure of our healthcare system and how it's being taken over, okay, by uh, corporations and absolute greed, absolute greed that would see uh, tainted blood victims basically turfed out of GP surgeries because they can't pay their bills anymore. What has happened to our country, okay? And uh, if I can't go to a GP, I won't be able to get my uh, prescriptions filled. I've uh, been on heart medication. I've got a heart condition. I've been on heart medication for 30 years. So without my heart medication, we'll have to see how long I go, okay? But uh, I hope you can listen to this podcast because I mean business and I've had a bloody gutful and I'll take what comes. I don't want to die a painful death, you know, if I can avoid it. But um, yeah, I've had enough. I've had enough and I'll be, I'll be saying my piece on this podcast. And if you want to hear the truth about Australia's deadliest medical scandal and its biggest cover up and why our country is in so, such a state and why our health system is given over to corruption, then you'll want to hear from me. And you'll also be interested to know perhaps 
that uh, I'm going to try and survive. I'll be speaking to people who tell me how I can get off some of this medication that these uh, big pharma doctors, these, these bloody drug peddlers, okay, these people have corrupted our system. You know, that GP surgery, if I'd said to them, listen, uh, would you still treat me? If, you, if, if I told you you could give me a jab, they would have waved, they would have probably accepted it. But because I don't want that, and because I want to live naturally, okay, I don't want all of these jabs. I don't want all of these pills, okay? I just want to be given the tests that they have, like this bone marrow test that I'm entitled to, but denied because of my tainted blood. And to those people into the Royal Prince Alfred Hospital, that denial has got you in court. I expect a court will probably watch this video and I hope that they do. I don't deserve this mistreatment. I really don't. And neither two victims of our group. Please, please help us. You know, I was saying this on the ABC. I did an interview on ABC radio a few years ago and I was saying, please help us because we're desperate and no help came. So no more, no more begging and no more seeing Australian doctors. If uh, my caliber of person is not good enough for them, if my being impoverished, okay, is not good enough for them, then why did I pay taxes? Why are Australians paying taxes? What do we think about a country that's be become like this? Treat people like me like this. I'll see you in court, the Australian healthcare system. I promise you that.